once in a manger a long time ago. Before there was Santa and reindeer and snow, a star shone down on humble beginnings below of a baby just born who the world would soon know. Never before had there been such a sight. Would the son of a king have to suffer this plight? Aren't there armies to lead? Aren't there battles to fight? Shouldn't he conquer the world and demand his birthright? No, this frail little infant asleep in the hay would change the whole world with the words he would say. Not about power or demanding his way, but mercy and loving and forgiving God's way. For only through humbleness would the battle be won, as shown by the actions of God's only true Son, who gave up his life for the sins of everyone, who saved the whole world when his journey was done. Many years have now passed since that night long ago. And now we have Santa and reindeer and snow. But down in our hearts, the true meaning we know it is the birth of that child that makes Christmas so. Thank you. 
My name is Hillary, and thank you for tuning in to Christmas with Family Church. We have a very special experience planned and a Christmas message coming up real soon. If this is your first time watching, welcome. Our hope is that you are encouraged and you enjoy this online experience. We'd love to know that you're watching and connect with you. Just click the pop-up link and let us know that you're here. This year has looked different for all of us. We've had to remain flexible and positive, gather online, outside, and with special precautions. But Family Church has never closed, and we have faith that God is doing something in lives right now. Through your engagement and generosity, we're still moving forward together and making a difference in our community through weekly online experiences, at-home craft ideas and resources for parents, for kids and students, community groups online for people to continue connecting with one another throughout the week, as well as our food and clothing distribution to those who are in need in our communities. We give away essential needs to thousands of people week in and week out. And most importantly, we're still bringing the life-changing message of Jesus and lives are being transformed. None of this would be possible, including how we're gathering here right now, without the incredible faithfulness and generosity of those who have continued to step out in faith and worship God in their giving. Generosity is our privilege and we give thankfully because everything we have is a gift and God deserves our first and our best. You can be a part of making a difference in lives of others by giving today. If this is your first time giving through Family Church, I'd like to invite you to ask God to speak to you right now. The easiest way to give is to text the word FC Whittier or FC Signal Hill and the amount to the number 28950 and just follow the prompts. Or you can go to familychurch.co or click the pop-up link to check out other ways to give, set up a reoccurring gift, or even send a check through the mail. Thank you all for your faithful sacrifice as you continue to worship God in your giving. Now, wherever you're at, let's lean in and engage in a few Christmas songs from our team. And if you have a candle, get that ready to follow along during a special message from our senior pastor, Dave Ansel. Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to Family Church Online. We're so glad you're joining us. Let's sing the first Noel. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to serve.
shall praise thy name in earth, sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty God. Welcome to Family Church Online. Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope you have an incredible Christmas season. You know, as a kid on Christmas Eve, my brother and I, we were, we were usually wearing the same matching pajamas, would watch Frosty the Snowman, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and they'd be sent to bed, waiting for Santa to make his rounds to the Ansel household. We'd go to sleep, and we just knew Santa, one day out of the year, was making the trek in his sleigh, pulled by flying reindeer to disperse presents to all the good little boys and girls. In fact, the song declares it. He knows if you are sleeping. He knows if you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good, for goodness sake. So we knew if we behaved, if we were good boys, and we thought we were, then Santa would reward us by giving us these incredible presents. And although it was only once a year, one day a year, we felt confident that he would bestow upon us the presents that we wanted. We thought we needed them, but really, we just wanted them. We also knew by what was said about Santa and what we read and heard about him that if you were nice— you got the good gifts, but if you were naughty, you either got a lump of coal or a bag of switches. <laughs> we concluded that we were in the nice category, and we thought, well, uh, that our goodness was good enough. And each and every year, we were rewarded by our goodness by presents that we received from Santa. So bottom line, I like Santa. He's a great guy. He's cool. I'm pro-Santa. 
But I've got a question for you. And I know we have a mixed audience there at home. What is the fundamental difference between Santa Claus and Jesus Christ? I know I'm getting a little spiritual, maybe taking it deep, but I know this is also, you know, kind of surface conversation a little bit. But obviously, one of the big things is, is that Santa is a fictional character from the North Pole. And Jesus is grounded in historical fact. Now, I understand one is fictitious, the other is factual. Secondly, there's a lot of different Santas, everybody. I've seen good Santas and I've seen bad Santas. Even the elf knows the difference. You smell like beef and cheese. You're not Santa. Favorite movie. A lot of different Santas, but Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, Santa's gifts are temporal. Christ's gift is eternal. Truth is, a lot of gifts that will be given this Christmas, and before the day ends, the wheels will fall off, batteries will die, and kids will cry. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Another difference is that Santa's presents are based on behavior, and Christ's gift is based on grace. You know, Santa keeps track of those who have been naughty and nice, those who have been bad and good. Then he gives presents to those who have been nice. And Jesus gave the perfect gift to those who didn't deserve it. That's a huge difference. Now, I was trying to think, when was the last time I gave a gift or did something nice on Christmas for someone I didn't particularly like? I mean, when I was out shopping, I didn't think about people who stabbed me in the back. I wasn't thinking about people who cursed me, uh, you know, or anything like that. And I ask you the question, when was the last time you bought a gift for somebody who cursed you on your job? <laughs> or the person who made that negative comment on social media about you? Or that teacher or coach who was mean-spirited to you? Or maybe you had someone on the Christmas list, but they betrayed you, stabbed you in the back, and... You just scratch them off. Now, friends, I'm not trying to guilt trip you right now. It's just human nature. We give gifts to the people that we like and the people who are important to us. But when those who have hurt us or offended us come around this Christmas season for some reason or another, we just don't include them on the list. So Santa gives gifts to those who are a selected group, but Jesus gave the gift of life to everyone, good and bad, those who have been naughty, those who have been nice, and that is grace, his unmerited favor. Now I can go on and give you contrast between Santa and Jesus uh, throughout this whole message, but you get the point. Christmas is not about the things that we give to each other. It's about the love of God and how he demonstrated that when he gave us his one and only son. Christmas is about Christ. It's going to work in Human history to forgive our sins and reestablish a relationship with every single one of us. That's the message of Christmas. It's the perfect present. And that's the title to this Christmas message here. The perfect present. This year, uh, the adults in the Ansel family, the Ansel household, we decided to choose one person that we will buy a gift for, a secret Santa kind of deal. But on Christmas Day, the giver and the receiver of the gift will be revealed. It'll be a lot of fun. So we pulled the name out of the hat, so to speak, except there's an app for this. And on this app, there's an option for you to put a wish list and one person in the family who will be, remain unannounced didn't want to leave it to chance. And so they posted to the wish list and then texted everyone. Uh, they just text and said, hey, just so you all know, if you chose my name, my wish list is available for you to see. Thought you should know. Also, it's on sale right now. I mean, this person didn't want to leave it to chance. Don't mess this thing up because I only get one chance at getting the right gift. You know, it's so easy during this time of year to kind of forget about what Christmas is all about. So we decided to do a series of messages entitled them Emmanuel because Christmas is more about God's presence than the presence we tend to get wrapped up in. And we get caught up in, you know, trying to get the right thing or we're not able to get somebody something so we feel poorly about it. And I want to encourage you today. It's not about what you get or what you can't give. It's about what God already gave. And I want us to focus on that this Christmas. God 
gave himself. The present God gave us was his presence. And his presence changes everything. Now, our key verse for this series has been Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. It says, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, I'm reading that a little differently than we have throughout this series because this word just was highlighted as I read it again this week. And that word is with. We understand the powerful word with right now in this very unusual time in this pandemic. We can't be with all of our family and friends right now. We can't all be together for Christmas services at family church. We can't be with everyone. And friends, I just want to tell you, I really miss being with our whole church family. But here's one thing that never changes. God Emmanuel is with us, and nothing can stop him from being with us. The greatest news of Christmas is he is present. The perfect present is his presence. God is with us. Oh, his presence, the presence of God can make a difference in your life. One moment in the presence of God can change everything. I want to talk about that for a few moments. Here's number one. In his presence, there's great joy, the Bible says. We we know that heaven is is a place filled with joy. We know that. The The perfection of heaven is beyond our earthly comprehension. I'm so thankful for heaven. In heaven, there'll be no more sin, suffering, sorrow, or pain. There'll be no more persecution, division, disunity, or hate. In heaven, there'll be no more quarrels or disagreements. There'll be no more disappointments. There'll be no more sickness, disease, or COVID-19. There'll be no more weeping because there will be nothing to make us sad. You know, with sin and its effects erased forever, it'll be a life of unimaginable blessing. The, The psalmist reflects on heaven and addresses God and says this. He says, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. He's looking towards heaven. In other words, the psalmist is saying, when I get to heaven, your presence will make all the difference in my life. Friends, think about this. This psalm was written before Christ, before he, before God stepped down out of heaven and made joy accessible to all the people on the earth. That's Christmas. No matter what's going on in the world around us, this is a season to rejoice. Jesus is the hope of the world. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 says, The angel reassured them. This is the big announcement. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy. To who? To all the people. You know, we sing this great Christmas anthem. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. And it's my prayer that this joy that comes from being in the Lord's presence will be great in your life this Christmas. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. There's great joy. Secondly, in his presence, there's unlimited freedom. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now, liberty is the birthright of every man and woman in America. Thank God. This is a free country. This land is the home of liberty, civil liberty, religious liberty, freedom of speech. But the freedom that the Bible speaks of is far greater than the freedom I just mentioned. The Bible speaks of a freedom that comes when Emmanuel steps into a person's life. John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Of course, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Freedom is what we have. Christ has set us free, Galatians 5, 1 says. So we can be free from a lot of things. First of all, we can be free from the mistakes of our past. The truth is nobody here, nobody listening, wants their failures to be broadcast to the world. I mean, if we fail, don't you want to minimize the number of people that know about your failure in life? I know I do. 
I wonder how many golfers are listening right now. I can't see your hand, but uh, I can imagine that there's some golfers. And not every one of you want everybody to see your golf score after you've played a bad round of golf. If you play a bad round of golf, you don't want your name on that card left in the golf cart. You don't want others to see it. You want to hide it. You want to rip it up. You want to throw it away. You want to forget about that round of golf. It's like the guy that was getting ready for a shot and he's visualizing his golf shot, thinking through the shot, setting up for the shot. He's getting ready and a voice comes over the loudspeaker from the clubhouse and the voice says, would the man on the woman's tee please move back to the men's tee? This guy just ignores that announcement. He keeps setting up for the shot. He gets comfortable again. And the voice comes over to the loudspeaker again. Would the man on the woman's tee kindly move back to the men's tee? And the guy ignores the second announcement. The third announcement comes again. Sir, would you please move back to the men's tee? The guy finally has enough. He stops. He looks towards the clubhouse and he shouts, Would the person in the clubhouse kindly be quiet so I can hit my second shot? (laughs) His first shot didn't go very far. Golfers will understand that. We don't like our mistakes broadcasted out loud for everybody to know. But we've all failed miserably in our life along the way. In fact, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Isaiah 53 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. Each one has turned to his own way. And that's the reason for this Christmas message. The Christmas message is right in the middle of this Bible in John 3, 16. We know that verse by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that anyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now verse 17 is what makes that verse so special. God did not send his son into this world to condemn it, but to save it. That's the message of Emmanuel, God with us, forgiving us, setting us free from our past. But you know, we can also be set free from our present hang-ups, habits, and hurts. The truth is, Emmanuel, God with us, walks with us through all the pain of life. He provides a way out for every temptation. And he also leads us into the ways of abundant living. He's Emmanuel. God with us. And finally, as I bring this to a close, in his presence, there is light shining in darkness. Everybody has dark days. There's times where you don't want to get out of bed. You're afraid to face the world. The pressures of life get to you. You just want to throw in the towel. Maybe you lose someone close to you. Friends, we all go through dark days. John chapter 12, verse 46, says, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world, so that all who put their trust in me will no longer wander in darkness. Now, he's not talking about physical darkness. He's talking about personal darkness. Everyone has dark days. Dark days of disappointment, dark days of distress, dark days of doubt, dark days of depression. You know, our newborn granddaughter, Mila Grace, was born 33 days ago. Oh boy, we haven't even had the chance to hold her yet because she's in the NICU. Uh, We're awaiting the day that she'll get to come home. Now, there's all kinds of complications that are going on. I've watched the trouble and the cloud of darkness kind of roll into our family and touch our son and our daughter-in-law. And, of course, you feel it as grandparents and as family. But I can tell you this, that every single day there's moments where this darkness can kind of creep in. But I don't think there's been a moment during these challenging days that our family has not felt the presence of God. Oh, there's going to come a day real soon, hopefully before Christmas, that we'll get to hold her in our arms. But it won't be without challenges. I guarantee you that. There'll still be moments where darkness will try to creep in. But this is what I know about God. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And when he steps into the room and into our life, he lights it 
all up. There's a light in the darkness. I think that's what the writer of 1 Samuel was saying in verse 22 or 29 when he said, You, Lord, are my light. You dispel my darkness. This Christmas, you may feel overwhelmed. Maybe you're going through one of those dark days. The good news is because of Christmas, there's now a light in the world that can drive away that darkness. Who is he? He's Emmanuel. God with you. The light of the world. And I pray that every single one of you will experience his presence this Christmas. You know, especially those of you that have not received this incredible gift from God, the free gift of salvation. You know, the greatest darkness of all is going through this life without a relationship with Jesus. When you see your need for a Savior because of the darkness of your sin, that is the moment when you invite Christ in that the light of Jesus will shine in your life. God gave the perfect present, his presence. Jesus came from heaven to earth, wrapped in humanity, to pay the price for your sin, my sin. He took our place and nailed our sin to the cross once and for all. And that gift is available to anyone that will receive it. Today, I want to give you that opportunity, the opportunity to invite Jesus Christ to light up your life. 1 John 2.8 says, The darkness in our lives disappears the moment Christ comes in, and the new light of life in Christ shines in. So if you'll permit me, I'd love to pray with each and every one of you. In fact, right where you're at as a family, or maybe you're watching this by yourself, maybe you would love me. Jesus, I pray that you would change everything. We love you. I pray that you would touch every heart, heal every hurt, shine your light upon every darkness, forgive every sin, free every addiction, and bring salvation to each and every person today. If you're here and you're listening and you know that that's you that needs to receive Christ, I'd love to lead you in a prayer to receive Christ right now. Maybe you can whisper a prayer like this, and I'll just lead you along the way. Lord Jesus, the best I know how, I surrender my life to you. I ask you to come into my life and make me new. I confess that I'm a sinner in need of your grace. And I invite Jesus Christ to be my Lord and my Savior. Change me from the inside out. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me the power to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, if you just prayed that prayer, we are celebrating with you for new life in Christ. In fact, if you made that decision, click on that link that says, I accepted Christ, and we'd love to celebrate along with you. Friends, this is a moment that we should all just rejoice in because of all heaven rejoicing over one lost sinner coming home. Merry Christmas to each and every single one of you. Well, normally at this time in our Christmas services, we are prepared to conclude our service by singing Silent Night and lighting candles together. And even though we're not together in person, I think it'd be great if we could just do that right now, right where you're at. So if you have some candles or you're by yourself, get that candle, go ahead and dim the lights and light that candle. I'm going to light my candle right now and be prepared to read a few verses along with you, and then we're going to sing Silent Night together. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Matthew 1, 23. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then Jesus said, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Church, let's continue to be the light. Merry Christmas, everyone. 
Emmanuel, God is with you. Let's sing together Silent Night. Love you all. Merry Christmas. Silent night, holy night, and all is calm, and all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy Infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace, silent night. Holy night, Son of God, O oh love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, the Lord at thy birth. Jesus, the Lord at thy birth. Happy birthday, Jesus. <laughs> It has been an incredible time together. We hope you were encouraged and had a good time. If you just made the decision to follow Jesus, congratulations. This is the most important decision you'll ever make. All of heaven is throwing a party and we're joining in. We would love to celebrate with you. So let us know about your decision today by clicking the button in the chat. Or if you're watching on demand, just click that link that pops up on your screen. Our team would love to connect with you and give you your next step. Thank you for watching Christmas with Family Church. If you tuned in a little later and you'd like to partner with us in making a difference as we continue food distribution to those in need and all of our other online community efforts, just text FC Whittier or FC Signal Hill to 28950 and follow the prompts or go to familychurch.co and click the Give tab for other ways to give. If you've never been to a Family Church location in person, and we'd love to have you come through to one of our services in the beginning of the year. You can find service times and locations at familychurch.co. We love you, church. Stay connected, and we'll see you real soon.